It's official, you should stop waiting for Intel. Well, they're coming eventually, but ask yourself these questions. Do you live in China? And are you planning on buying an OEM integrated pre-built gaming system? If the answer to those questions are no, then it could be a while before you ever see an Intel discrete GPU for your desktop. However, we do also have some uh, benchmarks from PC World testing out the A370M. We'll get to that in a bit. And also AMD is launching some GPUs today. So let's dive into all of this. But on Intel's uh, <laughs> website, we have a blog post which is answering some of the burning questions people have like, where are your GPUs? You launched your laptop GPUs five weeks ago, Intel. Five weeks ago. Where are they? A single laptop model in South Korea? That's where they are? Well, anyway, Intel's response. We've been working closely with OEM partners to get Intel Art Graphics mobile designs fully launched. First was Samsung, who started with availability in Korea and is expanding globally. Where are they globally? Is expanding globally? When? Where? Where? Where are these? Anyway, we plan to have broader OEM availability at this point. Yep, everybody thought you would. <laughs> However, we've had some software readiness delays. And together with COVID lockdown impacting global supply chains, OEM designs are only this month becoming more widely available. Uh, this month, when this month, Intel? <laughs> okay. Um, we've had some software readiness delays, okay? I think, I think that's the real issue is they're having trouble getting their software going here. Ah, I'm gonna move myself out of the way. Ah, anyway. Now, despite the constraints, our OEM partners have announced laptops with, yeah, announced laptops with Intel Arc 3 graphics, including Samsung, Lenovo, Acer, HP, and Asus. And we're working with our partners to help get them these products into market as soon as possible. Laptops with Intel Arc 5 and Arc 7 graphics will start becoming available in early summer. Start becoming available. Just like how your Intel Arc 3 mobile laptops started becoming available five weeks ago? Is that what we're doing? Okay, well anyway, I don't care about laptops anyway. So how about question number two? When are the desktop cards with Intel graphics coming? Well, unlike notebook designs, desktop systems have a vast set of combinations, including memory, motherboards, and CPUs. To limit some of this variation, we will launch working with system builders and OEMs with specific configurations. In other words, they're having trouble getting a wide variety of software, you know, all the computer parts, like, like it is a real challenge but they're basically saying they have not solved that problem <laughs> to have, you know, you just get your their GPU and slot it into any system and be, be confident that it will actually work. So anyway, we will release our entry level Intel Arc A series products for desktops, starting with the low end A3 first in China through system builders and OEMs in quarter two. Yeah, that's right. China, exclusive and not even individual cards. We're talking system builders and OEMs in quarter two. Anyway, e-tail and retail component sales will follow shortly in China as well. Um, great, proximity to board uh, components and strong demand for entry level uh, discrete products makes this a natural place to start. Our next step will be to scale these products globally. Our next step will be to scale them globally. Okay, when is that next step? Well, rollout of Intel Arc A5 and A7 desktop cards will start worldwide with OEMs and system integrators. So double check there, if you're planning on buying one of these for your PC as a DIY component, we're still not saying that. We're starting with OEMs and system integrators later this summer followed by component sales in worldwide cha worldwide channels. Notice there is no timestamp given to that other than it's after all the OEM parts and system integrators. And they're confident this staggered approach gives them the best chance to blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, now there was also some questions about, uh, so people have noticed that there is are specific benchmark optimizations 
on these cards, which might skew benchmark results on certain benchmarks from representing reality. Now, to be honest, I don't know the specific details of which of those, which benchmarks are affected by this, but they had promised a driver update to solve this in April. Well, April's long gone now, and that didn't happen. Uh, what they're saying is that they decided to collect all of these um, various toggles into a uh, larger control scheme in their software, and that that's going to require additional development time. So anyway, maybe that's true. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, if you're still at all interested, we do have some benchmarks to look at. So uh, we have PC World able to test an ARC A370M. So notice this is M. It's the 370. What does that mean? Well, the, the A3 series is the lower end parts, but there's a, an A350 and then there's the A370. The A350 we have actually seen before in this one little laptop model in South Korea. <laughs> And uh, the A370M, well, is being viewed in a very specific way here. So it, it, it's important to understand that this is not PC World getting their hands on one of these things to play with and do their own completely unlimited testing. This was paying a visit to Intel's Jones Farm campus in Portland, Oregon, where Intel invited him to put an ARC A370M reference laptop, which is based off of MSI's Summit E16 Flip Evo through the ringer. So basically he got one hour to test out this using benchmarks of his choosing, but like, yeah. And now, now also, if you want the testing details and what they put these things up against, these were performed again on this reference model uh, laptop from Intel while they were on, com uh, on the campus. However, he did get five identical reference systems, which allowed repeat tests. So even though he only had an hour, you could run multiple tests simultaneously on the various systems and then average those results. So it's a little better than just being given one thing. Now, Intel also provided the Alder Lake reference system, which is giving him the Intel Iris Xe graphics comparison data for these benchmarks. But then the other systems they're benchmarking against are an HP Spectre X360-16 and an Acer 5 Nitro, which are review systems not provided directly by Intel. So those would not have been, you know, artificially limited by Intel if you were expecting something like that. Um, and we had performance power settings on um, these systems while the Acer 5 Nitro was at default. And they were able to do 3D Mark, Time Spy, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy XIV, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. So we do see some ray tracing performance. And um, anyway, let's, let's pop into some of these benchmarks. So in 3D Mark Time Spy, well, I'm a little bit curious, to be honest, how this one plays into the whole, like, um, what about benchmark specific optimizations question mark? Does anybody in the comments know if 3D Mark Time Spy would be one of the ones being artificially kind of boosted by this? I honestly don't know. But anyway, its performance in this actually does have it almost match, almost tied with a uh, RTX 3050 laptop here which is pretty interesting. Um, that's uh, this one, and it does beat another uh, RTX 3050 laptop here with the Spectre X360, and um, you know, significantly behind a 3050 Ti laptop, and, and well behind a 3060. However, it, it's competing in there with the 3050s in this benchmark, and it is uh, a huge jump from the Intel Iris Xe. So the actual performance here isn't terrible. Okay, but that's but what about some actual games? So Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker benchmark, we once again uh, see its performance coming in along the lines of of an RTX 3050. Although I will point out that notice that this is the Spectre X360 16 3050 model, whereas in this one we saw two different 3050 models here with the. Um, Spectre X360-16 being by far the lower performing of the two RTX 3050 models that they gave us data for here. And now we're only seeing it up against that one, where here it's actually slightly losing. And in this one, this is the one that it was actually beating in Time Spy by a somewhat noticeable margin. So interesting. Anyway, 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider results, we once again see it up against just that lower of the two uh, RTX 3050 models, and it is beating it here. With 1080p highest, again, we saw details of the settings they used, I think, down in the, the initial testing system uh, stuff I showed you. But 59 FPS, so almost a 60 FPS average here, uh, which, you know, honestly, that's pretty good. This is pretty good gaming performance. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. How about some ray tracing? Well, it's infinitely better than an, than an Intel Iris Xe that does not meet uh, the ray tracing standards to run the game at all. And it's only, you know, a few FPS behind the RTX 3050 laptop here, although keep in mind that at these low of numbers, uh, 3 FPS percentage-wise is a lot bigger than it might sound. And neither one of them here is giving an amazing, uh, an amazing experience. Um, and this, again, I think they had it to the lowest ray tracing settings available in Metro Exodus, although it was at 1080p which on a small laptop screen, sometimes you could go below that. Anyway, so there's some performance numbers for our Intel Arc uh, A370M. It honestly doesn't look that bad, but what if you ran software? Like, like they're, they're clearly having some, some issues, right? <laughs> uh, with general support and getting everything to play nicely. So I, I've, I'm curious what kinds of issues you'd run into if you had it for more than one hour to play around with and saw, like, do all games even run on it, question mark. Um, but the overall performance there, I didn't think seems terrible as long as the price is right, given the 3050 laptops are actually getting pretty old at this point. And that's kind of the whole issue here. Anyway, last little bit of news today is um, that the uh, AMD Refresh should be launching. By the time you're watching my video, there might be full reviews out. By the time, I, I, as of my filming time, still seems to be mostly under the embargo, but probably just for a few more hours. But we do see the 6950 XT, 6750 XT, and 6650 XT graphics cards launching today. If you're like, wait, there's no 6850 XT? Well, there kind of is but it's a mobile part. And um, we actually do see Lenovo launching the Legion 7 gaming laptop with a 6850 XT, but again, that is a mobile part. So it does not seem like the desktops are getting a uh, refresh on that. But there also is a new Radeon software update today, which the main thing seems to be just support for these new GPUs. Now, uh, the details on this, if you missed my other videos on it, are I think the number one thing that matters is that they're raising the MSRP. The 6650 XT is going to be have a $20 um, higher MSRP than its 6600 XT that it's replacing, despite the fact that AMD even admits in its own um, press deck uh, reported by WCCF Tech uh, early that it's only 2% faster than it, the model that it's replacing. The 6750 XT sees a larger performance jump from AMD's reviews. I'd like to see third-party reviews today, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on that but also sees a $70 increase to its pricing, which I think is absolutely disgusting. Um, yeah, especially given the fact that you actually can find 6700 XTs around their actual MSRP. Um, if it's, you know, if it's an overclockable result difference between the two, I don't see why you would spend $70 more on that one, but we'll see if third-party reviews uh, review, uh, reveal anything else. And the 6950 XT coming in at $100 more than its 6900 XT counterpart. And if you want to see some of the official, uh, you know, official uh, AMD numbers on these things, we do see them uh, having some decent performance here. And um, this is up against a 3090 and a 3090 Ti. Uh, the, this is with resizable bar enabled on the NVIDIA GPUs and with smart access memory on the AMD uh, system. Now, we do know that some of these games, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, uh, even Borderlands 3, I don't know all of these off the top of my head, but Forza Horizon 5, especially when you have smart access memory enabled, uh, these tend to be very AMD-favored titles, although some of these aren't. So, um, or, or are a bit more even. So, but I'm just saying the selection of games that AMD is gonna give out here is not gonna be as uh, fair as you'll probably get from um, the, th the independent review outlets later today. So I won't dwell on this too much, but you do see it beating the 3090 Ti in some of these and beating the 3090 or matching it in all of these. However, again, these were games that AMD did select, so that is important to keep in mind, although I'm still not suggesting that's in, you know, 
uh, a bad result or anything like that. The 6750 XT, we see it up against a 3060 Ti and a 3070, again, resizable bar and smart access memory enabled here. And again, in this particular set of games, we are seeing the uh, 6750 XT winning in just about all of them uh, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider coming in slightly behind the RTX 3070. Again, I don't think that this is the typical average that result that we're going to see um, from third-party reviewers. I think it will pull ahead of the 3060 Ti, which it was pretty closely matched with on its non-50 model, its non-refreshed model. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it'll be consistently beating the 3070 in a wider sampling of games. Um, and the 6650 XT, uh, again, we're just we're seeing it up against the 3060, which, um, yeah, I mean, the normal 6600 XT was already beating this, the, the 3060, so I'm not sure this tells us all that much. The more interesting comparison, I think, is versus the model that it's replacing and whether it's worth the amount more uh, that they're charging here, given especially that the 6900, uh, 6900 XT has already been available for under its $1,000 MSRP. And uh, like I said, these other models have been available um, at their MSRPs, and even the 6600 XT I have seen fa uh, falling below its MSRP if you count rebates. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.